It is a joy and a privilege to be with you and to worship with you this morning and to hear together and to share together the wonderful things that God is doing in each of our lives, in all of our lives. Friends, four times in the 19th chapter of the book of Revelation, verses 1 through 10, there is one dominant word. Let me see if you could catch that word this morning. Revelation 19, 1, we read, I heard what sounded like the roar of a large crowd in heaven saying, Hallelujah, salvation, glory, and power belong to God. Revelation chapter 19 and verse 3, And I heard again a loud voice saying, Hallelujah! And the smoke from the flame that consumed the great city goes up forever and ever. Revelation chapter 19 and verse 4, we read, And the twenty-four elders fell down and worshipped God the one who is seated on the throne, and they said, Amen, Hallelujah. And Revelation chapter 19 and verse 5, we read, And the voice from the throne said, Hallelujah. And all his servants and all the people both great and small, bow before the one who was seated on the throne. So four times in Revelation 19, 1 through 10, there is one dominant word, and that is the word hallelujah. So here is my question for us to consider this morning. Am I a hallelujah Christian or am I a oh my God Christian? <laughs> the churches we belong to, are we hallelujah parishes or are we oh my God parish. The communities we belong to, are we hallelujah Christian communities or are we oh my God Christian? <coughs> May I share with you why I am a hallelujah Christian and not a oh my God Christian. The first reason that I am a hallelujah Christian and invite you to become a hallelujah Christian is because my picture of God and the scripture's picture of God is the greatness of God. It is God and God's greatness that makes it possible for his people to be and to become Alleluia Christians in season and out of season, to be Alleluia Christians when the sun rises or when the sun sets, to be Alleluia Christians when we have answers and when we don't have answers, to be hallelujah Christians when we are healthy or when we are not healthy. 
the prescription that scripture calls the people of God is to the magnificence and the majesty of the greatness of God in scripture. Psalm 48, verse 1, great is the Lord. Not great will be the Lord or great was the Lord, but great is the Lord. Right now, here, in our contemporary times, in our contemporary moments, where we are, with whom we are, and no matter what circumstances we face, the God we belong to is a great, majestic, and marvelous God. And he calls us, he calls us to be, hallelujah, Christians. Psalm 95 and verse 3 and 6. The Lord is the great God, the great King. Let us bow and worship God. One of the many names of God revealed to us in Scripture is El Shaddai, God Almighty. He is the Lord of hosts. Now God's greatness is seen in two particular ways. One is in the character of God. Second, in the performance of God. Here is a little window into the character of God. In his greatness, Exodus chapter 34 and verse 6, the Lord himself... This is not Moses' description. God himself passes before Moses when he is on the mountain and declares to Moses who he is. I, the Lord, I am God, who is full of compassion and pity, who is not easily angered, who shows his great love and great faithfulness, I will keep my promise for thousands of generations. I will forgive sin. I will destroy evil. Moses fell before this great God in matchless character. Impeccable is the word. And he worships God. We need to understand and remind ourselves constantly that the God of the Bible is not a monster. The God of the Bible is not a mean God. The God of the Bible is not an angry God. The God of the Bible is not a cruel God. The God of the Bible is not a God who gets even with people. The God of the Bible is pure joy, is pure grace, is pure love, is pure goodness, is pure beauty, is pure forgiveness. The God of the Bible is great in his character. The God of the Bible is great in his performance. There are many passages of Scripture. In fact, the gospel we read this morning is again a little snapshot into the greatness of God's performance in the person of Jesus Christ. But in the Old Testament, we have another picture from Isaiah chapter 40, verses 12 to 30. A wonderful description about the greatness of God in his acts, in his performance. In verses 12 through 14, God is great in himself as a person. In verses 15 to 20, God is greater than all the nations of the world. Imagine the wealth that belongs to each nation that runs into $40 trillion. And God is greater than all of that in all of the wealth of the nations and all of the riches of the nations. In verses 21 through 22, God is greater than his creation. And J.I. Packer, in his wonderful little book, Knowing God, says, The world in which we belong to dwarfs us, but God dwarfs the world in which we live. Verses 23 to 30, God is greater than all the leaders of the world. 
put together all the heroes and all the champions and all the monarchs and all the bigwigs and all the elites. Maybe a million more kinds of people like Elon Musk. And God is greater than all of those leaders of the world. And Paul writes and says of this God, he is the wisdom and the might and the majesty of God. I am a hallelujah Christian because the God I worship, the God I belong to, the God who invites me to be with him is a God who is great in his character and he is great in his performance. And there is nothing, no, there is nothing that my God cannot do for me. And I trust him every step of the way. The second reason I am an Alleluia Christian is because of the goodness and the grace of God. Again, Scripture says in Psalm 106 and verse 1, Thank the Lord for he is good. In verse 2, His mighty works are good. In Psalm 107, verse 1, Give thanks to God for he is good. Psalm 118 and verse 1, This God is good and gracious. And the best expression of the goodness and the grace of God is in the person of Jesus Christ, our Lord. And that is why we read from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 4, verses 14 through 21, for it is a description of Jesus, the image of God in goodness and in grace. God comes to us in Jesus Christ. God lives, to, lives with us in Jesus Christ. God speaks to us in Jesus Christ. God walks with us daily in Jesus Christ. God lays his hand upon us and touches us and sets us free from all captivity. Whether it is named or unnamed, for he is greater than all the names we might place to that which makes us captive. God is good and gracious to us when he speaks to us and says to us, this is the way to go. This is not the way to go. God in Jesus Christ shows us his goodness and his grace when he took your sin and my sin and your ugliness and my ugliness and all the crud in your life and my life and nailed it on the cross. And Paul says, in that death, he defeated the power of death and has set us free so that we can be the sons and daughters of God. He shows his goodness to us and his grace to us when he rose again for us and he offers all of himself to you and to me. We see God's goodness and grace to us when our sins are forgiven. We see God's goodness to us and grace to us when he fills us with his Holy Spirit. God's goodness and grace is given to us when he calls us my son, my daughter. God's goodness and grace is given to us when he continues the wonderful journey of Christian discipleship in our lives. And Paul, writing about the riches of this God, talks about the wealth of God's grace and God's goodness in Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 5. My friends, you and I can be hallelujah Christians. Our churches can be hallelujah Christian. The Christian community can be a hallelujah Christian community when we embrace and affirm and advocate and live in the goodness daily and in the grace of God. We can say with Paul, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me daily. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Because of God, his greatness, his goodness, his 
grace. And third and finally, you and I can be hallelujah Christians. The church can be a hallelujah community because of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ our Lord. There are many ways to look at the wonderful image of glory, but the one I want to share with you this morning is what happens after all is said and done. When I die and he calls me to be with him, is it still a mystery or is it a majesty for those of us who live in Christ and die in Christ. Paul, writing of those who die in Christ, says in Philippians chapter 1 and verse 21, For me to live today is Christ, and if I should die, which we will, it is not a minus, it is a plus. How is it a plus? It is a plus because of the glory of God. And we have wonderful little images of the glory of God in terms of the future of your life and my life. One little snapshot is 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 20 through 51. Another one in which I want to share with you is Revelation chapter 20 and 21. Here are some things that await us in terms of the future because of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Revelation 21, 1, there will be no more chaos and no more confusion and no more calamity. It shall all be eradicated once and for all permanently. In Revelation chapter 21, and verse 4, there shall be no more tears. All hurt is replaced with immeasurable joy, unconquerable joy. In Revelation chapter 12 and verse 4b, there is no more death, mortality. The limitation of age and physicality will be replaced with immortality. Revelation chapter 4 verse 21, 4c says, there will be no more mourning. There will be complete joy. Revelation chapter 21, verse 4d, there'll be no more crying. All weeping will end. Revelation 21, 4e says, and all pain will be replaced with pleasure. All suffering will be replaced with song. Revelation 21, 6, there is no more thirst. God will fulfill all our dreams. Revelation 21, 8 and 27, no more evil and all wickedness will be vanquished once and for all. Revelation 21, 22, we don't have to go to church anymore. There is no more temple for God is our temple. Revelation 21, 23 to 25, there is no more night. For everything is light. 21, 25, Revelation, no more closed gates. We can come in and out and enjoy the nourishment and the nurture we have in the presence of God himself. Revela Revelation 21 and 26 and 27, and the curse is replaced with blessing upon blessing upon blessing. And Jesus teaches us to pray, let your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Which means all of these glorious, wonderful gifts that are in heaven is ours today. You don't have to live in the curse of evil or Satan or diabolism or darkness or death. You and I can live and thrive in the blessing of God who gives life upon life upon life. In Jesus Christ, this is the glory 
that is ours today. We shall have full access to the tree of life. We shall not be hurt by the second death. We shall have authority then. We shall be like Jesus, for we shall see him face to face as he is. And Jesus said, Blessed are the pure in heart for they will see God. Then we will see him as he is. Now, today, the pure in heart can see him as he is. The glory that awaits us is ours today. We don't have to wait for that. That is why, my friend, my brother, my sister, all of us can be hallelujah Christians because of the greatness of God, because of the goodness of God, because of the grace of God, and because of the glory of God. Would you not like to be a hallelujah Christian? May it be yours today as it is ours for the days to come. All we have to do is reach out and touch. That which is out there is ours today. Make it part and parcel of our lives. And affirm daily, you are great, you are good, you are gracious, and you are glory. For me, now, today, Father, in Jesus Christ. Would you do that? Let us pray. Father, we know beyond the shadow of a doubt that you are bigger than big. You are closer than close. You are greater than great. You are lovelier than love. You are kinder than kindness. And this morning we reach out our hand and place it in your heart and in your hand. May your greatness be ours today. May your goodness be ours today. May your grace be ours today. And may your glory be ours today. We pray this in the strong and wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.